So, there's not many things in this world that royally piss me off. I like to think of myself as a pretty laid-back character, but one of the biggest pet peeves I have is the hype and the inability to pay off. Cloverfield, Dallas Cowboys, Duke Nukem Forever, the list could go on and on. But sadly to add on to this list is Aliens Colonial Marines. Sega's joint venture with Gearbox is just the second letdown of the development hell franchise. And while Duke Nukem brought us back with a few charming moments, Aliens Colonial Marines is much more of a chore to play than even a game. And from recent postings, it seems as if Gearbox cannot take criticism. Much like ID did with Rage, they seem to be pointing the finger at secondhand developers and the very fan base that spends millions of dollars each year to keep them in business. That being said, if you judge from the demo last year, the game is a completely different product. Now I understand the communication is a hassle between developers, but shit, in a total game that was initially planned 2001? I mean, it was going to be for other console, but I mean, the planning and the initial planning and everything was back in 2001. To think that you could have come up with something much more rounded, it's not asking for much. But it is asking for something remotely on par with other shooters, which this isn't. So let's dig deeper into this. It flows like the spiritual successor of James Cameron's sequel, Aliens. They make a few nods and winks to Ridley Scott's original film on Prometheus. However, the holes in the story are so massive that it can make any connections in this universe void. But it doesn't even matter because you're introduced to the main cast which is about as one-dimensional as a cardboard cutout. Roger Ebert made it to consider video games not a true form of art. And if most video games did play like this, and the story didn't work like this, then he'd be sadly correct. It follows a cliched, boring plotline and nothing but significant comes out of it. No matter how many oohs and we don't leave marines behind they use, the story never sets off in an attempt to build suspense or character development fails because you never care about anything that happens. If you've lived under a rock in the last 10 years, and it's apparent that this game it looks very outdated compared to the demo last year, and it's absolutely shocking to see how ugly a game can look. Aside from occasional nifty lighting used from the Unreal 3 modified engine, nothing else visually pops out. In HR Geiger's world, of debauchery and horror is rendered as an ugly low texture nightmare. Almost everything that makes the series spectacular is absent in this release, and one can, relate, can actually compare this to a release from 2004. Hell, Chronicles of Riddick on Xbox puts this game to shame, and comparing something almost 10 years old is not good. So, probably the high point of this game would be the various gun noises and xenomorph vocal work. The voice actors did the job they could with the material given, but that alone cannot save the mistake of the game. So what else can I say? The guns sound good. So what? So, the game is ridiculously easy. It's actually quite embarrassing how poor the AI is in this game. Aliens will run past you. They'll get stuck in walls. I mean, they'll disappear from the game entirely. Not one level do I not encounter such a glitch. And to talk about AI, human AI is beyond ridiculous. Allies are virtually useless. And that means we'll walk right directly into the gunfire. And normally it's just directly into your gunfire because they're off aiming somewhere else back there. Another annoying thing offhand I do want to mention is that if you do do this with human AI, what happens is that they'll occasionally, when you go to a certain area and you want to lock and load, restock, whatever, um, they just go off. They continue going off and they go into the line of fire. And by the time that you're you're loading up and getting ready for the next firefight, which is inevitably going to happen, you know, they're already getting like sounding the alarm and stuff. So I mean. Sometimes this is amusing for things to walk directly into gunfire, but this is a nearly goreless, bloodless violence, and it's boring, and it offers nothing but a time killer. And I understand that I am not going to say that all m ready games are good, but there's nothing of value in this, and it's nothing like, you know, seeing a gory death or whatever, and it's in, to somewhere interest. But, um, I mean, finally, when you're... Uh, 
introduced to the iconic motion tracker device from the original films to track down a single alien. That's probably the most suspense generated in this game. It was probably the only moment in the game where I was actually playing a game. And that, and there was also a decent stealth sequence in between that. But these minor moments can't make up for a lackluster and straight up boring gameplay. The notion of customizing an underpowered gun is an age old gimmick. But upgrade after each upgrade makes you completely unsure if its effectiveness has changed at all because nothing feels different. Co-op is mildly better, but with such a disastrous story and rotten graphics, you'll be lucky if you find anyone playing this in the oncoming weeks. As much as I wanted to love this game, I had high hopes for this game. And, I, and even after seeing the early reviews, I hoped that it would be like a cult status game like Deadly Premonition. Aliens fails to deliver on the most basic of shooter experiences, which is really sad. What originally had potential for a great true survival horror game by a mostly brilliant direct developer is no more than a bland, boring, ugly corridor shooter with mindless droves of enemies confronting you in the worst of ways. Upon reaching the ending, which feels like a disappointment, you you first start really um, upset about that, but then it ultimately turns into anger. I mean, it's agitating in this day and age that things like this are released. I understand there's a couple games out there that are released just to make a profit and to continue, but in this kind of in this kind of business, it is really hard to do that. I mean, if you crash and burn, you tend to not come back from it. I mean, nobody wants a game to be horrible. I don't think anyone out there anticipates a game to be bad as people do with movies or whatever. But sadly, this overhype for Colonial Marines was not justified. And much like Duke Nukem Forever, I am ashamed of falling for the promises again. This is Tyler Lee with Ron Show Films and Ron Reviews, signing out.